Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, if there's one accessory in astronomy we probably all take for granted, it's the, uh, it's the old finder scope or star finder, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and a good calibrated uh, finder, if you think about it, you, you go outside and, and you, you, you point, you aim, it takes a couple of seconds and then you're straight into the eyepiece and the, the eyepiece takes all the credit. When in fact this little finder has, has taken so much um, hassle out of uh, finding whatever you were trying to look for. Because if you are new to astronomy and you've never actually used a telescope before, you'll soon find, even for a seasoned astronomer such as myself, that without a finder scope, something as bright as the moon is quite a challenge to find in, in no matter what size telescope you use. You know, you'll tend to be doing a lot of this <laughs> okay and and this is why they, they take out so much works and a lot of frustration now uh, finder scopes come in different flavors shapes and sizes okay you'll get but the the two main common uh, finder scopes they're on the uh, available and and they're usually supplied with entry-level telescopes such as these two here are the optical finder and one like this, a red dot finder. Now, like I say, they are um, a, a lot more different designs out there. there. There's even some finders that are optical and they have like a, a diagonal on them, like, uh, like this, um, for, for ease of use. Um, but I'm not a big fan of those. I'll tell you why in a, in a short while. So we've got the uh, optical finder and the red dot finder. Now, the optical finder, um, all that does, if, when you look through this, th these actually will magnify um, the image a little bit, just like a telescope, and that's exactly what they are really, they're a little telescope. But what you'll find in those, they usually have a crosshair, okay, so they act a little bit like a gun sight, if you like, and you get the crosshair in the target, and uh, if it's calibrated, then it should be in the eyepiece. With a red dot finder, the way these work, uh, they appear really to, to put a laser dot on the uh, night sky as though you were using like a laser pen or something like that. Uh, but they're not doing that in actual fact. There's like a, a lens here at the front um, and a, a laser here and it just shines through and it actually causes like a reflection, if you like, of the laser beam, which gives an illusion that it's uh, pointed at the sky. Get that in the center of the target and again, you found the object. So basically, no matter what it is, if it's an optical finder or a red dot finder, they both do basically the same thing. They help to find uh, what you're looking for. But like I say before, these need to be calibrated. They need to be in sync or in tune with your telescope. Now, if you have got a new telescope, please don't think for one minute that just attaching that finder scope to the uh, telescope, or even if it's come with a finder scope pre-attached, uh, that it's going to be in tune with your telescope, because it won't be. Um, if it is, you've got a very, very rare one, <laughs> because usually they're nowhere near. So how do you calibrate uh, or set up your finder scope? Well, this is a job uh, that's best done, again, in the daytime, okay? Uh, you want to pick a nice, clear uh, day with good visibility, okay? And you can even do this one um, looking through the window, okay? You can actually take your telescope if you need to go upstairs or something because you want to, you want to target with a, at least uh, two, 300 yards away, okay? Don't like, you know, choose the bird table at the bottom of your garden. You want something, you know, quite in the distance. Um, and like I say, if, you, if your telescope is portable enough to maybe take it upstairs or something, if you can get a better view at something, uh, do that, okay, it's fine. We're not like looking at the night sky here, we're just setting up the finder. 
Now, the target that you choose, okay, is important really. You don't um, pick something like a chimney pot or the top of a tree or something like that because there's too many of those and it's really easy to mistake something, you know, like, like a treetop or a chimney pot. Pick something really distinctive like a church steeple that may be in the distance, um, a distinctive flag, something that you're not going to mistake in the eyepiece, okay? So now you've got your target, okay? Now what you want to do is forget about your finder scope for the minute, just find that target in your eyepiece. You want a low powered eyepiece, okay? Something like a 25 mil will be fine, something like that. Low powered eyepiece, find the target, target in the, in the uh, eyepiece and get it centered. Now, if your telescope uh, mount does have the ability to lock things off, okay, it's a good idea to lock things off at this point, okay, just so you're not going to knock the telescope out, out of uh, the target that you were looking at. Okay, just double check again, make sure that the target's in your field of view, okay, nice in the center. Now go over to your finder scope, okay. Now, this is the same for both... Um, optical and red dot okay and what you want to do is just have a look and see what the situation is basically and see how far out it needs adjusting now and and this is where we're, we're just going to adjust the uh, on the adjustment screws of the finder now okay we don't touch the telescope at all we're now going to get the crosshair or the dot onto let's say it's a flag okay that we're looking at onto our flag that we're looking at in this example we've got that nicely centered now, to do these adjustments on your optical finder, you will find like uh, usually it's uh, either three screws or maybe six, okay, six adjustment screws. And um, what you'll find, I mean, <laughs> I prefer, I'll go into why I prefer red dot finders. I've been using red dot finders for that long now, I forget. Uh, which ones are best to adjust actually, whether it's the front or the back. What I do remember is you're better off just only adjusting one set, kind of centralize the front set a little bit. And I, as I remember, I used to just alter the back. Okay. And uh, if you've never done this before, just, just alter one screw at a time, very, very slowly, and just see how the cross is going to be moving. Okay, just to give you an idea of where, what, what screw is going to do what to the uh, actual crosshair in the finder. For the red dots, you'll find that there's a, 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 an adjustment screw at the front, okay? Now, this is going to do your left and right, okay? And uh, at the back here, there's another little adjustment wheel, okay? And uh, th th that does the up and down, I believe. It could be the other way around, but you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not sure, actually. Is that the left and right? Anyway, I'm sure you know what I mean. Uh, so that's how you adjust them. And once again, just get that dot in the center of the target, and uh, then you're pretty much there. Now, once you've done this, what I like to do is, I mean, it should be pretty much set up now, is if you have locked it off, just unlock your telescope. Say we've had this pointing at our target. Okay, we've unlocked now. I like to just move it out of the way. Okay, now this time, use your finder to find the same target. And remember before we were using the telescope to just sight it, now use your finder. Okay, find your target that you, that you need to be... Uh, that we, we cited originally to set things up. Okay, now check your eyepiece. If your flag, as we're looking at in our example, is in the center of your eyepiece, congratulations, you have calibrated your finder. Now, when it comes to optical finders, the ones that magnify, um, on a lot of entry-level telescopes, they're usually supplied uh, with the telescope. And they usually round about uh, a five times magnification and the aperture is round, usually around about 20, 24 mil. Now, to be honest with you, that's really not big enough, okay? What you'll find with those size finder scopes is they tend to be more of a hindrance than a help, okay? Now, if you have got one of them finder scopes and you're finding that when, you, when you're going to look for an object through it, that you tend to be doing a, a, a lot of this fishing about, okay, then I strongly advise upgrading the finder, okay? Now, you don't have to go for an optical finder. You can go, I would, like I say, I prefer these red dot finders. Now, if, if I had a 
30-inch telescope, I'd still put a red dot finder on it, okay? Uh, I just love these things. They do the trick. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, the only disadvantage I would say about red dot finders over optical finders is a good optical finder are great if you're going to do something called star hopping, okay? Which is a good way of... of um, jumping your way across stars to find those uh, fainter, harder to see objects, such as the uh, such as galaxies and nebula and things like that. Because they give you that more of a magnified view, you can see some of the fainter stars. But, but you, to be honest with you, I still star perfectly fine uh, with, with this red, red dot finder. So like I say, it, it is just, um, um, down to the user really whether you prefer optical or red dot they, like I say they both do the same thing at the end of the day they do have advantage and disadvantages but that's just like all things a little bit like telescopes really you know reflector refractor which one do you choose um, but whatever you choose the most important thing is just to keep it in tune with the telescope. Now it's something, luckily, this ain't like a collimation thing or, or anything like that. It's very rare. You have to uh, check your uh, or, or readjust um, the finder scope. Now, of course, that's if you are traveling a lot, taking the telescope uh, to darker skies or some, something like that, or often pack it away and take it out then they can get knocked about and it's always a good idea to give them a check but if they're just left set up like this and you're just like me just take it literally four foot away well the other side of these curtains um then you know there's, there's absolutely no problem at all they, they pretty much stay 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 calibrated but like I say, if you have got one of these small finder scopes um they they really do could be doing we upgrading now um, as a general rule okay I mean to recommend one particular good optical finder scope uh, out of hundreds out there but there's uh, one rule I would stick to is not go for anything lower than 30 millimeter of aperture okay it doesn't matter about the magnification so much it's that wide field of view you want okay and plenty of light coming in so 30 and above spot on for optical finders. Now, just a little tip about using a, a finder scope, whether it's optical or red dot, and that is when you're using it, keep both eyes open, okay? Don't be tempted to give it one of these, okay? Squint your eye up and look down because all you're doing is making life hard for yourself, okay? Now, especially in uh, optical finders because usually they're like refractor telescopes everything's upside down reverse flip whatever okay so th the technique you want to practice is just to keep both eyes open okay so you would see the crosshair or the red dot okay and a good way of practicing this technique is if you look straight at me and put your hand up to your eye like this and then close this eye all you can see obviously is the palm of your hand now, but if you open your eye, you can now see me. Oh, hello again. You can see me, okay? But you can also see the palm of your hand, okay? Well, imagine the palm of your hand is a red dot or a crosshair, okay? And that's how you want to be, want to be, want to be uh, using your red dot finder, okay? Or your crosshair. Also, this uh, unaided eye um, acts a little bit like a, another guide scope, okay? Because if you're squinting like this, okay, and looking this way, all you've got is this in, in, in your eye, and you know, you can still have a tendency to do a bit of this fishing about behavior. Uh, so keeping both eyes open, you'll find that you're guiding the, uh, the guide scope or finder scope a lot easier to the target that you're looking for. Now this is one of the reasons, if you remember I said it at the start of the video, you get these um, finder scopes with a diagonal on the, end, on the end. This is one of the reasons why I don't like those, because to me it, the, 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 they mess with my head, <laughs> them things. Because you're kind of looking this way, you know, you're looking at the... No, you know what I mean? I, I mean, don't get me wrong, people use them and people love them, but to me just that makes more sense than that.
<laughs> as you can see. But uh, yeah, I don't really get diagonal finders. Uh, let me know if you've got a diagonal finder, how you get on with it. <laughs> because like I say, I've used them twice before and yeah, just, just couldn't get on with it. I just couldn't wait get, to get back to my red top finder, to be honest. Well, there we go for another video. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed, maybe think about subscribing because I do do regular uploads for the uh, new astronomer. In the meantime, don't forget, keep those uh, finoscopes calibrated and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.